Talk about diversity, a Japanese captain, Swedish and Russian alternates? You love to see it. What's going on guys and welcome back to your Saskatchewan Stags franchise mode. We are just about headed into the postseason 20 games away. We have a record of 40, 14 and 8. Now it looks good. It looks like a pretty good record, don't get me wrong, but we're not playing our greatest hockey. I mean 40, 14 and 8, how much can you really complain about but there was a stretch and you guys saw it in the last episode where we were losing three or four straight here and there but you know what I'm not gonna worry about it let's get into the postseason I have a feeling we're gonna turn it on here at the end of uh, the regular season we have 20 games left and we got to go over a couple of things are we gonna trade Hayden Fleury are we not gonna trade Hayden Fleury what are we gonna do the first thing is from packaging peanuts YouTube all right best YouTube name ever he says X tech back at it again forgetting everyone's potential you love to see it that's right i always forget uh we've had so many players medium elite low elite uh one tenth elite medium franchise the worst player ever franchise sometimes i get a little bit confused now i thought aguchi was maybe franchise because he's playing like a franchise player he has almost 90 points 87 in 62 so you can see my confusion but he's is medium elite he's been medium elite ever since we drafted him second overall in 2021. Thank you very much to the Montreal Canadiens and their pick. We got something from Quebec Gamer. He says, really did a great job by trading Dal Cole for Connor. Now you have both of them on the team. You basically traded Connor for a fourth, a fifth, and a third. That's just quality GMing right there. You can't teach that. That comes from years of franchise mode experience. But no, that just kind of worked out perfectly. We have both of them, a couple former Winnipeg Jets. I knew, I mean, I kind kind of cheated the system a little bit because we we all kind of knew Michael Dalgol was going to drop. Um, he dropped, like, he was killing it. Like, we thought he was going to stay at 87. We ended up trading him for Kyle Connor, and we also threw in the fourth, the fifth, and the third. Uh, and then he was still doing good, and then he really dropped off. But 31 points in 62 games. He could have his best year, I guess, since his last year with the Stags. Uh, we'll have to find out, though. 83 overall, kind of the perfect third liner. I'm pretty happy with him. Now, now, Riley Miller, he goes ahead and he talks about Hayden Fleury. He says, Hayden Fleury is your shutdown guy. His plus minus is always good. Stay calm. He's a stud and letting your other defense become more offensive. I agree. Now, this comment here from the assistant coach, Seattle Storm Bears, president of hockey operations and your assistant coach of your Saskatchewan Stags. He goes ahead, he steps off the bench and he writes in the comments. He says, the real problem here is you're putting two offensive defensemen together and two defensive defensemen together. Bowen Byron should be playing with Boquist because A, you're ruining his growth otherwise, and B, he and Boquist have excellent chemistry last year. I wouldn't trade Fleury this season. I think he would complement a player like Justin Falk. Put the four defensemen in their proper spots, and that should increase both Falk's and Boquist's production. You should try Bowen Byron and Fleury to play the shutdown roles comfortably. One thing I'd look for is a better fourth line winger. So he basically wants to put Bowen Byron up on the first line, which is where we had it all of last year. Year. And if you don't remember, we won the freaking Stanley Cup. So I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I guess I was kind of harsh on Hayden Fleury. I mean, he's a plus 15. He's steady back there. Maybe the points aren't quite there, but you know what? We had this exact same top four last year, uh, except our bottom pairing changed. But we had this exact same top four, and these guys all have Stanley Cup rings. So I don't think we're going to trade Hayden Fleury. I mean, I was just looking around, trying to spark up our power play a little bit, but... As for the fourth line winger, um, Norm Clarkson, all right? So listed as a minor checker. Now he's only got nine points. I see what you're saying there. Is there anyone that's ready to go in our AHL team so we don't have to make a trade? Uh, Afinisankov is 79 overall. He's ready. He was the guy we got from the Bruins, so we could bring him up. Um... Like, I don't really want to make a trade because I know Afinisenkov is probably just going to come up for next year. And I guess playing him down in the American Hockey League isn't going to hurt. But you know what wouldn't hurt is really getting a solid, like, maybe someone who's a little bit too good. Um, I don't know if he's still around, but kind of like a player like Joe Pavelski, who's maybe 83 overall, you know, 39 years old. Someone to really strengthen up that bottom pairing. He's going to play 20 games as a shutdown forward. I'll see 
see. Maybe there's a vet that we got to get a Stanley Cup. We'll have a look. I'm not saying I'm going to make a move, but uh, we'll see what's out there. Looking for guys who are like 83, 84 overall. Uh, someone like Kyle Palmieri. That might not be bad. Uh, 34 years old. He has four years left at 2.8, which isn't really a bad contract, but I'm kind of looking for someone a little bit different because I don't want to trade for someone who's going to be around for a couple more years because we're going to have guys like a Finisankov or we're going to have guys coming up where they could really, uh, ooh, also, hold on there. Did I see 83 overall for Braden Shen? Yeah, he's not happy. Uh, his morale must be down. He's not super pumped over there in, in Boston. I'm sorry, Braden Shen. I'm, I can't look at it. I'm sorry. But the Joe Pavelski type player is something that I'm looking for. Like, Backland, I guess? I was kind of looking at him earlier. One year left, 2.3 million bucks. Uh, that would be the guy who I'm kind of looking at. Maybe we'll circle back on Backland. Ah, see what I did there? Um, if not... I'm going to have a look around the NHL, though, see if there's maybe someone that's around, but that could be the best option. Even a guy like David Krejci, 38 years old, like that's the kind of player I'm looking for. Now, Anze Kopitar is a very, very interesting player. 37 years old, one year left on his contract. Ooh, we could get Kopi. Now, he's probably too good for the fourth line, but I think the big kid from Edmonton, he is listed as a fourth liner. If I remember correctly, uh, he should be a fourth liner, so I'm kind of overplaying him. However, he is playing very, very good. Uh, yeah, he's listed as a fourth liner, so all right. There's a few options out here. This is kind of fun looking for vets. I'm looking for a guy who has won Stanley Cups in the past or a player who has never won the Cup and we can really make our special run for them. So let's have a look. Let's see what else is out there. Ottawa apparently wants to get rid of every single player on their entire roster. Classic Ottawa. Oh man, Claude Giroux would be perfect. However, that cap is just too much. Looks like Toronto is cleaning house as well. Everyone's gone. All right, boys, I think I found our player. No, it's not Blake Wheeler. However, that is a very interesting option. I just quickly switched to that team. I think it's going to be from the Washington Capitals, and we are going to go ahead and try to acquire Jonathan Taze because he's a perfect fourth liner, although he does have two years left on his deal. However, I'm trying to save him from Washington because they're not even playing Jonathan Taze. They're scratching him. He's scratched. He's been a healthy scratch for 62 games. The poor guy's been in the press box. He's having hot dogs and popcorn for 62 games. Are you joking me? This is Jonathan Taze we're talking about. Or we could go after a guy like Blake Wheeler, who actually having a ridiculous year. Oh, sorry, he's playing in the AHL. I gotta save both these guys. I thought he was... I thought he was putting up these kind of numbers in the NHL. I'm like, damn, 38 years old, almost a point per game? No, he's killing it in the American Hockey League. Feel bad for all these old guys. I think we could get Jonathan Taze for pretty much Norm Clarkson straight up if we wanted to do that. Um, I might be able to get him for even cheaper. We'll see what we can throw at him here. We have a lot of prospects we can part ways with. Like, I could easily just trade him Norm Clarkson straight up. That might be a little bit too much. Uh, I could probably give him Zaitsev and like a pick, maybe like a fourth. Let's see if that'll go through. Zaitsev and a fourth. Uh, no, they want the fourth. They don't want to get rid of them, even though they should because they're not even playing them. The two years left kind of scares me. Let's see if they'll take some cap. So they'll take uh, 500 grand, which is whatever. So we get them for under a million bucks. Um, we're gonna have to add a little bit more though, for sure. So what if I gave you Zaitsev, who's a guy who we don't really have any room for. Uh, he was a former second round pick. He's already 24 years old. Unfortunately, he's just kind of stuck behind really good centers in our organization. So Jonathan Taze, are you coming to Saskatchewan for two fourths and Zaitsev? The trade value looks pretty pretty even no okay interesting what if I made that a fourth and how about a fifth and a seventh just throw a couple of draft picks your way come on Washington you're not even using this guy this is just free money come on trade rejected yikes okay interesting I think I have some goalies I can throw at them actually 
I got a couple goaltending prospects, that's for sure. Let's actually have a look at Russ Delmore. Look at that trade value. Damn, 72 overall. He's medium franchise. This guy could grow real quick. Uh, 28, 15, and four shutouts. Not bad at all. Russ Delmore, how are you, bud? All right, so I had a closer look here at the Washington Capitals organization, and one thing they really need is a goaltending prospect. Now, since we have Russ Delmore, we can part ways with Junior Spalling, who was a seventh round pick for us. Uh, what a pick. But unfortunately, I think we're going to move him to Washington because Washington doesn't really have basically anything in the goaltending department. So I think we're going to help them out a little bit. They, However, they do have Seattle Storm Bear legend Aaron Dell between the pipes. Um, but we're going to try to see if we can basically turn Russ Balling into a second in Jonathan Taze and then Zaitsev for basically two fifths or whatever. Just trying to get as much as I possibly can. But if we can get a second for a seventh round pick, I'm pretty happy about that. So will this go through? Trade rejected. Da, 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 da. So they don't want to take the cap on. Whatever. That's fine. I can take back some cap. I can take it back. Take on 300 grand just because I have to win a little bit. Will that go through? Trade accepted. There you go. On behalf of the Washington Capitals organization, I accept your trade offer. There you go. We're going to do some roster moving around here. Uh, Norm Clarkson, thanks but no thanks. And now Honka is still on our roster. However, I can't can't send him down because he requires waivers and he's a good dude to have however he's not really getting any better uh, just being a healthy scratch he's a good guy to have for injuries in the um in the postseason, so I'm gonna hold off on sending him down. He's just gonna practice with the team. Professional practice guy, it's basically what he is. We bring in a guy who has two Stanley Cups, Jonathan Taze, welcome to the squad. Now do I play the big kid right here and put Anthony Sorelli who has 82 face off, Jonathan Taze has 85, so I guess it kinda makes sense. We move Sorelli to the wing. Let's see, um, older guys who have a lot of skill, they kinda seem to simulate really, really well, so maybe that'll bump up this line a little bit and then the big kid from Edmonton he's going down to the fourth line which is totally fine so there's that um, our AHL team gonna be looking like this there you go everyone's happy yes everyone's good friends and I'm gonna give you some more ice because you are the ninth overall pick top 10 pick we definitely have to give you top six minutes in the American Hockey League so I'm pretty happy with this though uh, Jonathan Taze he's listed as a third liner although Colton Sissons has one better overall I think he's kind of suited for the fourth line a little bit better. So there you go. There's our trade. I'm happy with it. Uh, Jonathan Taze, welcome to the squad. A trade I didn't think we would be making. I was kind of expecting to get a defenseman, but you know what? Those comments really, uh, ooh, a first and a fourth for Philip Grubauer. Sorry, man. Don't need a goalie. Those comments from Brandon Barenfeld and everyone else telling me, hold on, don't worry about it. Hayden Fleury's good. Just relax. You're making a trade just to make a trade. And maybe that was true. Jonathan Taze, first First game of the year. Finally, welcome back to the NHL. I'm sorry Washington was a bunch of dickheads to you. Scratched you for 62 games. Plus, Jonathan Taze is from Winnipeg, so he gets kind of closer to home. One province over. Period. Number one. And it's one nothing. Anthony Sorelli and Ryan Merkley involved in some trade rumors earlier on, but nothing materialized. Period. Number two. All right, they get one more. Logan Couture. Come on here. You think Logan Couture is going to be named the captain of the San Jose Sharks now that Joe Pavelski is uh, no longer a member of the Sharks? He's got to be my bet for the captaincy. Adam Boquist, talk about a captaincy. Assistant captain, baby. He scores there, tying the game up at two. Are we going into overtime? All right, we're going into OT. If we go to a shootout, I will intervene just for fun, but no need because Ryan Merkley, the guy who we almost traded for, he gets two. He goes, ha ha. I should have traded for me. All right, fine, Ryan Merkley, fine. I'm over it, though. Let's have a look at the trades, see what happened around the NHL during the trade deadline. wonder if TSN had a boring trade deadline. Let's see what happened here. So our trade, Jonathan Taze, obviously they got a, they got a uh, goalie uh, for the future with Junior Spalling. So Calgary deals Backland, who we were interested in, and Nick Letty uh, to the LA Kings. New Jersey gets a Saskatchewan Stag legend, Jesper Fast. 70-point guy, by the way. A uh, bunch of firsts being thrown around for prospects. Toronto 
Toronto gets Ole Matta, uh, Adam Henrique still around, no real blockbusters, Noah Hannafin's a pretty big deal, but nothing super crazy. All right, let's get a bunch of simulation done. Let's go. Um, 45 goals for Gucci. Now, if I remember correctly, I think that the $3.9 million man, he had 35 goals. So if he wants to hit the 5-0 mark for the third straight year, he's got to really, really turn it on here. So let's go. Let's get a bunch of simulation done. Do we have any games against the Capitals? Uh, we do don't unfortunately oh actually wait we do we have one game against the caps which is obviously going to be awesome to simulate against the team that traded away and sat jonathan taze what are you guys doing again i hope you're keeping track of the st louis blues and there you go okay three sorry four straight losses and then you get a win Yikes, not good. But uh, again, I've I've completely lost uh, track of our record against the St. Louis Blues, but only one win, two wins. There you go. There's a big eight to one win. That's what I mean. This team is interesting because we can lose four or five straight and then it's difficult for us to come back. So, I mean, eight to one and then we lose seven to six and then we win five to one against Buffalo, who has a pretty good record. So there you go. Let's go here up against Agency and the Arizona Coyotes. It's one one nothing Christian Fisher, period number two. There you go. Valerie Chubby Chubasov. He scores on Michael DiPietro. Going into the third, Jonathan Taze. There you go. And agency. Couple of absolute legends going into overtime. Are we going to see a shootout just for fun? Let's go. Now, if you've watched our Seattle franchise mode, you will know that there's a guy named Agent C, Cedric Corey, who loves to do some nasty moves in the shootout. We've seen it once or twice, but here comes Hiroyuki in the desert. Ooh, tried to go short side there, but unfortunately the goalie kicks out the pads, and here's the man of the hour, Agent C. Ooh, nothing fancy. He tries to eat the post there. Number 32, Cedric Corey. Here comes Sujimoto, the captain. Ooh. Oh, he snipes it. Looks good with the C on your sweater. Alex Galchenyuk, the newest Pittsburgh Penguin. Oof, that was a cheeky one. And Big Germ just sat his ass down. Aguchi, number 21. The $7 million man goes upstairs. How are you? Keep the change. Here comes Lavoie. He comes in on Big Germ. Ooh, short side. All right, all tied up at two. Going into round number four. 91. Is that Steven Stamkos? No, it's Cole Profetti. What a goal. That was actually nasty. Nasty. All right, Oliver Ekman Larson, Seattle Storm Bear legend. He says, yeah, not today. Big germ, not allowing it. Oliver Ekman Larson ends up eating the crossbar. How'd that taste? Ooh, eight to nothing loss. Yikes. Yeah, boys, I don't know what's going on here. 4 2 loss up against the Devils. Gotta get a win there. There you go. 47 wins. We have five games left in the regular season. 11 overtime losses, which is a little bit weird. Um, but we have five games left. Let's see how many goals Chubby has. Let's see if he's even close to the 50 mark. Aguchi, he's hitting the 50 and 50 club. 53 goals, 50 assists. You love to see it. Oh man, unfortunately, Chubb's not going to hit the 50 mark unless he just completely goes off and scores two goals a game. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. But you know what? 40 goals, 80 points for $3.9 million. I am not going to complain about that. So we're definitely in the playoffs. That's good. However, I'm still a little bit concerned because we haven't been playing that great. I mean, our record's awesome, but you got to think we started off like 15 and one and we were just crushing it. But something Something kind of feels off here. Up against Florida, 4-3 shootout win. There you go. Can we get win number 49 against the Jackets? No. End up losing 3-2. Can we get 49 against Edmonton and then get 50 against the Kings? There you go. All right, come on. I want to see 50 wins before I see 20 losses. That's all I want. And LA is actually a pretty good team. So here we go in front of our home fans. We got one more home game against Winnipeg. Of course, we'll simulate that one. Let's go here. 50 wins, boys, for the third straight year. Can someone get some confirmation on that? Here we go. Period. Number one. And it's 2-1. There you go. Chubby and Gucci. There you go. Lucas Raymond. All right. So that was a guy that we could have had. We had him and uh, Quinton Byfield, which we could have had either one, but we ended up choosing uh, Cole Perfetti, who I think is having like a 70-point campaign right now. So here we go. Period number two. All right. 3-2 Sujimoto and Killer. Oh, man. 
the original Saskatchewan Stag. He scores. Oh, man, that one hurts. Killer. Why'd you got to do me like that? But Hiroyuki comes in and blasts one past Robin Lehner. 33 shots. Ooh, wait, Como. He gets one, cutting the lead to one. They got a power play, but that's Tyler Benson killing that off all day. Jonathan Taze, you love to see it. Our bottom six killing penalties like it's not a big deal. 43 shots. Can we hold the one goal lead? There you go. No X Tech jinx this time, baby. That's 50 W's on the year. There you go. I think that's three straight years of 50. Uh, all right, actually, we're going to slow sim the last three games because I forgot this one was against Jonathan Taze and his old team. Now, remember, Jonathan Taze, remember, these guys scratched you, all right? They scratched you for 62 games. Make them pay. Let's go. First period. All right, 2 nothing. Boquist and Sujimoto, they started their backup. Period number two. Come on, Taze, I need a goal. Aguchi, he makes it 3 nothing. All right, we got some time here. Oh, Braden Lemieux, he gets one. That uh, guy who went way too high in the draft, he was picked ahead of Jack Hughes, ahead of everyone, which was just ridiculous. Come on, I need a Jonathan Tay's goal. How about a Kyle Connor goal, making it 4-1? to one. That is how this one is going to end. Did he have any points at least? Nothing from Tay's. However, he did have three shots, but Cole Perfetti and Kyle Connor, three points each. Bunch of beauties right there. All right, we're going to slow sim all the games here. Let's go. Winnipeg versus Saskatchewan. Jonathan Taze against his hometown team, the Winnipeg Jets. The return of Michael Dow goal. The return of Kyle Connor. Here we go. Period number one. It's 3 nothing. Chubby, Sujimoto, and Chubby. Imagine Chubby scores five tonight, and that's what he needs to hit 50. He's got two. He's got two in two minutes, by the way. We scored all of our goals within two minutes. Period number two. All right, make it 4-1. Colton Sissons. Five, Chubby with the hat trick. There you go. He's got three in the final game of the regular season. If that's what he needs to hit 50, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. But we'll see. Five to one. Scores on Franklin McKenzie. Is he the starter now? we got a lot to do looking around the NHL. How about four, Chubby? Come on, four goals just for fun. Aw, Tsujimoto makes it six. That was a huge game. Winnipeg's actually a very good team, so we killed it there. Chubby, love to see it. All right, boys, not a bad end to the year. Three straight wins, or is that four straight? That's four straight W's, and who do we got in round number one of the postseason? Give me the Hawks. Give me the Hawks again. That's the third straight year with the President's Trophy, and we have our expansion nemesis. Our expansion stealing brother bastards, the St. Louis Blues, in round number one. Now, have we played the Blues in the playoffs before? I don't know if we have. I'm not super familiar with their team. Over the past three years, we've played a lot of playoff hockey. It's hard for me to remember. Now, before I look at the Western Conference, I got to go to the East because Florida, once again, has not made the postseason. And I'm sure Oscar Gormley had over 60 goals. Oh man, what is that franchise doing? So we got uh, the Blues in round number one. We got the Hawks and the Kings, the Ducks and Nucks, and we got the uh, Winnipeg Jets and the Dallas Stars. So it's going to be a fun first round, that's for sure. Let's do a good old season wrap up. Aguchi, what a year. After signing his brand new $7.3 million contract, he rewards the boys with a 112 point year, a plus 50. Nine. Let me just repeat that. A plus 59. That's ridiculous. Hiroyuki with 39 and 67, 106 points. Not bad at all. Not bad. That's three straight years of over 105 points. You love to see it. Sujimoto does not crack the 100 point mark, but he did have 94. Not a bad year at all. Uh, Chubby, he had 44 goals. All right, almost, almost hit the 50 mark, but still, I mean, 300 shots. This guy loves shooting the puck. He's a power play god as well, 33 power play points. Um, yeah, a very good year for Chubby, $3.9 million. If he hits 20 goals, I'm absolutely ecstatic for under $4 million. But just the fact that he scores at pretty much will, like, that is unreal. What a crazy contract. Now, I've done a fair share of franchise modes, trust me, but I've never seen a player ask for 
so little amount of money. And then after he signs the contract, boom, 50 goals. Like, it's just so weird. It's just the strangest contract ever. Cole Perfetti, 85 points. There you go. That's a career high. Finally breaks out of his shell here, almost doubling his point total from last year. That's awesome. 70 apples. What a year. Kyle Connor with 71. Unfortunately, didn't hit the 80 mark like he hit last year, but still, if my second liners are all over 70 points, I'm super, super happy. 65 for Adam Boquist. Another outstanding year. Thank you very much, Chicago. Actually, his lowest point total since 2020, which is kind of shocking, but still, a very, very, very good year. Not going to complain about that. Justin Falk with 55, 19 goals. Anthony Sorelli with 39. Michael Dalgoal with 30. So that's good. Uh, that entire third line did awesome, actually. I'm pretty happy about that. For the majority of our year, that was the third line, anyways. Bowen Byram, 28. Hayden Fleury, 21. Colton Sissons, 14. Tyler Benson, uh, he had 11. And Jonathan Taze only had 6 points in 20 games, but he was a plus 1. Not really going to complain about that. We got him for his veteran leadership, so I'm not going to worry too much. Uh, have a look at the goalies. All right, Igor McGillney, 10 and 7. Not bad for a 78 overall. When did we draft him? Fifth round in 2018, so he's been around forever. Uh, big Germ, another fantastic year. Still killing it at a 90 overall. Big Germ. Big Germ. That could very well be another uh, Vesna trophy for the big guy. Uh, this was the franchise guy that they drafted in the fourth round, so he turned out to be pretty damn good. Uh, have a look at rookie skaters. Unfortunately, I don't think the big kid from Edmonton is even going to be close. He finishes fourth in rookie scoring, which isn't bad. Not bad at all. Uh, but Carson Nicholas, he was a first round in 2020 he had 30 goals probably going to take home the calder trophy unless there's a crazy goalie but i don't remember there being a crazy goalie so yep that guy's definitely got the calder trophy now as for point leaders i'm gonna say i mean it's pretty hard to bet against oscar gormley so i'm gonna go with him did he lead the league in points yeah 122 79 goals and you miss out on the postseason this guy is i don't know what his deal is I mean, the first couple years, he was totally fine making the postseason, but they haven't done anything since 2022. It's now 2025. Come on, boys, figure it out. Almost three straight years of 80 goals, and you miss the postseason every single time. Look at his shots. 531 shots. That's ridiculous. Phil the Thrill, 37 years old, 117 points. Out of all the things you love to see, that's it. Don't call him Russ Ron Tierney, 116 points, not bad. Jesse Pool Party Pugliarvi, he gets 116. Patrick Laine with 66. Aguchi, how are you, bud? Uh, PD with 48, that's an insane year. Hulkenberg with 62. Tarasenko with 62. Lots of goals are being scored around the league. Nika Solani, 60 goals. Pfft. Imagine not having 116 points. Not my first liner. Not my first liner. Sammy Blaze has 99 points. I had no idea he was that good. I mean, he is a Stanley Cup champion. Shout out Boris Yakupov for another 30 goal campaign as a defenseman. Just a freak of nature. Quietly there, Vinny Zapp had a 60 goal campaign. Not bad at all. Oscar Gormley has 30 power play goals. That's Is that even like allowed? Can you do that? Boris Yakupov had 28 fights. Who's fighting that guy? Who has balls of steel to fight a guy who's 6'7", 240? That's, no. If he even challenges me, that's, I'm going right to the room. Like, middle of the shift, take me off, coach. I'm getting undressed. I'm out of here. No way I'm fighting that guy. So we finished with the President's Trophy once again for the third straight year, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we finished with 115 points. Goals four, we scored 324. That's good enough for numero uno, baby. Uh, let's have a look at goals against. We allowed 239 goals. Uh, that's good enough for number two. Ten goals behind the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, power play percentage, we finished... Uh, number four, not going to hate on that, 28%. Have a look at 
XPK, we finished 81%. That's awesome. Sorry, 81.1. .1 better than the stinky Winnipeg Jets. That's awesome. Uh, home, we're doing pretty damn good. Away, we did pretty good, but struggled a little bit. 7-3-0 uh, and oh in our last 10 hockey games. And that's going to be it for this one. We are going into the postseason against, against the St. Louis Blues. Let me know what you think we should have done regarding our trade. Did we make the right move getting a guy like Jonathan Tays? Should we have maybe went a route like Backland? Maybe someone's a little bit younger. But you guys kind of understand where I was coming from and you guys kind of kind of understand the role I wanted this player to come in for one year, win a Stanley Cup, and then we can bring in a guy like a Finisenkov who is definitely NHL ready. I just got to say, shout out to Mahalik because he has been grinding, grinding. What was he, 47 overall when we drafted him in the, what, the third round? Round, and now he's basically NHL ready, so we'd love to see it. All right, we're having a look at the draft class here, and I realized I might have screwed up, so hopefully it doesn't freeze once again. Uh, we got Braxton Beach here. Uh, we got a Finn. Mark it in and in and in and in and in. He's an in and in. Uh, Merrick Bliznak. What a great name. I wish my last name was Bliznak. Now I'm looking at the team right now, and look at all the 90s we have. One, two, three, four, five, plus big germ, make that six 90 overalls. We got Bowen Byram, Chubby, and Profetti all at 89 overall. Now it looks great, but if you look at our cap situation for next year, I mean, 23 million, and we have to sign Adam Boquist, who's going to be, what, 7 million? Cole Profetti is going to want, what, six? 5.6. Uh, we got to re sign Justin Falk, who this could be his last year. Like, we have some serious things to deal with here in Saskatchewan. But the first thing we're going to do before the playoffs start, we're going to give him a contract extension. He wants a extension for sure. We're going to offer him $6.5 million for the next five years. A Norris Trophy winner. Come on, baby. You got to sign that contract. Find out in the next episode if he's going to sign that. I'm pretty sure he will. And we got the St. Louis Blues in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Let's go.